Hey, this is Chris at Talon Gaming. Today we're going to be looking at a game independently developed and published by Sad Square Studio, released in October of 2020, Visage. Available for the Xbox One, PS4, and Windows 10 PC using the Unreal 4 engine, Visage is a single-player psychological survival horror set in a strangely structured suburban home in the 80s. You'll play as Dwayne Anderson following a very traumatic event, his suicide. He wakes up covered in blood and is played by paranormal events throughout the house as he searches for escape. You'll solve amazing puzzles, experience terrifying, horrific deaths, and explore immersive, hair-raising, creepy, and grotesque scenery and content throughout. System requirements are fairly modest. A modern dual-core CPU and a GTX 950 or equivalent are required, while a quad-core CPU with a GTX 1060 or faster are recommended. You'll also need about 10 gigs of free storage, which is quite small by today's standards. There's a lot to see and do in Visage, so let's dig into a few of the main aspects of the game. Sanity is maintained by staying in the light and popping pills found scattered around the home. Witnessing paranormal events created by ghosts and ghouls residing in the home, Dwayne's sanity will wane and dwindle away. These include things such as opening and slamming doors, turning off lights, and busting light bulbs. To help you keep an eye on your sanity level, there's a meter in the bottom left that indicates how your mind is currently coping. As sanity levels dwindle, paranormal events will grow in severity until a ghost or demon attacks Dwayne to his untimely demise. Puzzles come in a large variety of flavors, from the downright simple such as interacting with mounted photographs or following a compass to having to rearrange photos with clues found in a seemingly disconnected location, three-dimensional mazes, and more. Visage, while not the bloody gore fest found in many other titles, absolutely does not lack in what you'll come across during play. Murder, violence, paranoia, paranatural, supernatural, alcoholism, drug use, abusive relationships, and other horrifying depictions can be found throughout. Many items such as teddy bears, dishes, and knickknacks found in the game can be picked up and examined. Some of these items have more significance than others. A few are collectibles, some are required for progression, and others are optional items that may or may not affect the final outcome of the game. There are even a few items that can be dropped after use and will return to the storage room for later use. Inventory space is limited, after all. Each of the chapters in the game follows a storied history of one of the home's former residents. Raken, a man who suffers from a phobia of being watched, is convinced that he's being spied upon. Lucy, a child with an imaginary friend that is anything but imaginary. Dolores, a woman who suffers from a memory disorder who becomes increasingly paranoid and destructive. And finally, Dwayne, the protagonist and main character who must face his own failures and come to terms with his actions. Textures, animations, and cutscenes, quite frankly, are superbly done. Well, there are better out there. What's presented here is quite fantastic. Most everything from the puzzles, the ghosts, and surrounding environments have been created with vivid detail, with very few exceptions. The chase sequences in particular feel frighteningly real. While I did occasionally notice some clipping, a few visual bugs such as a wall that disappeared, and a few gaps between visual elements, the overall presentation is still quite impressive. I should add that the character you control is invisible, which does have some advantages, but it's quite odd to look in the mirror and see nothing. No arms in front of you, floating items and such. I know it doesn't affect gameplay, but I found it detracting from the experience, at least to some extent. The sound effects and music here are quite possibly what separates the game from some of the others I've played. The environments in the game feel alive, the clocks ticking and talking, footsteps and thumping, doors slamming, squeaking of crutches, they all play a part making you feel like you're part of the story. I found much of the voice acting to be quite good and lifelike, but like many other games I've played, not every voice actor or writer perhaps is created equal. Hey, there's no special. Where do I start with the story? Well, I'll try not to spoil anything, but the game starts out with a bang and quickly simmers down to let you get accustomed to the controls in the environment. Despite what sometimes appears like very little is going on, the story is not necessarily only what's portrayed through the happenings of the game, but in the environments themselves. Family portraits, home videos, notes, comic books, phone calls, scenery, and so much more all add in little bits of information without you truly even noticing it. Could you call me just to let me know everything's fine? Beyond the environmental storytelling, there's a fair bit of content going through the cutscenes to gain a pretty good understanding of what's going on. However, I was still left with some questions unanswered even after completing the game.
The controls can be a bit clunky at times. There's an option to enable a simple door opening scheme rather than the default in advance mode. Don't even think about it, just change it. Using the advanced mode was just a lesson in anger management. The developer comes right out and tells you up front that this game is difficult. I wouldn't say it's frustratingly difficult because it's not, but this is no walk in the park. You'll need to use your head to solve puzzles and work your way through the game while trying to maintain sanity and avoiding ghosts and demons alike. In some cases, you'll need to explore further and look for changes in the environment in order to progress. The game allows you to save in a variety of ways, including autosave, manual, and quick save. There are certain parts of the game where saving is disabled completely, so try to use the quick save feature in between to save some time. On a few occasions, the autosave actually failed, and I ended up having to go and rerun portions of the game and their cutscenes. Visage took me about 15 hours to run through to 100% completion on my first attempt. I died quite a few times too, but I'm sure most people are going to take at least 12 to 20 hours to complete the game, as it's not easy and it takes a fair bit of thought. A fast-paced adventure, it is not. I'm not sure too many people will play through more than once, but in any case, at least not right after completion. All in all, I was really impressed with Visage. From the visuals, the sound and level design, everything has a way of working together, slowly ramping up tension to the point where the hair on my arms literally stood on end. Even though in a few cases I knew it was inevitable, I still yelled out when it happened. Stop! Holy fuck, what is that? On more than one occasion, the scares literally made me jump out of my chair. This, this right here is why I play. Total immersion to the point where I feel like I'm living through the character I'm controlling. For fans of survival, this is truly a no-brainer. If you love a good scare, challenging and rewarding gameplay, horrific storytelling, just give it a try. Turn off the lights, turn up the volume, and enjoy what might possibly be one of the best experiences in the genre. Thanks so much for watching up until this point, but before you go, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing for more content just like this. This is Chris from Talon Gaming, signing out.